Hello everybody, I hope you're all doing well today. Of course, I have the guys out here to show them around uh, the greater Seattle area. And, well, of course we're stopping places and doing things. So, naturally, I'm still finding things. So I thought, aside from doing the videos with the little flip camera that I found with our adventures and stuff, I would do a video more traditional like this and uh, share some of the recent finds. So, might as well do that. So yesterday morning, me and Colin went to breakfast, and right next door was a thrift store. So we went ahead and uh, stopped to buy. So, here is what I have found. It's a Dell. I believe it's the uh, BTX style case. It's a Dimension 9200. Somebody obviously put it through a Passmark performance test, and that's a score that they got. Picked it up for $11, cannot complain there. And that's the front and side. Has a Core 2 Duo inside with Windows XP. Note that it does not say Windows XP, Windows Vista compatible. It's just a regular Windows XP uh, logo. On the other side, we have a Washington Huskies sticker. So must have been used by somebody going to college. I have one of these dimension machines I received from Chris many years ago uh, that I kind of worked and got working again. And uh, that one had black side panels. This one has white side panels. So a little bit of a difference there. Of course, they all have this air intake here in the front for the CPU cooler and all that kind of stuff. Now, naturally, uh, you would open a case on this side for a normal, uh, what would it be, ATX style uh, case or whatever. But uh, here, being, uh, what, what did I just say, BTX? Uh, that could be totally wrong. It's just, it's, it's flipped. So the door that you open is on this side, and the motherboard is, is on the back. So, of course, on the back, we have the power supply audio, a whole lot of nothing, because that would probably be your legacy ports like Serial and the big printer port and VGA, but none of it's there. A whole bunch of USB, I'm assuming 2.0, being a Core 2 Duo, and our video card with what looks like some type of S-Video, I'm assuming, uh, DVI and VGA. Now you could probably put a adapter on here. This DVI does have the extra pins for dual monitor VGA, so that could be very well possible. At the same thrift store, I took a look around and picked up this Dell keyboard. It's, I don't believe, the same era. It looks a little too new, but it's always useful to have a USB keyboard around. It is missing a foot, but hey, for quick use, that is fine for a dollar. Can't complain there when you just need something to provide simple input. And the backspace is normal size, at least. I don't like those really small ones. This is the layout that I prefer. On a side note, just some other things. I picked this up on our adventures at the Second Use Building Place. This Leviton socket with the A15 red Sylvania bulb. And some different cords. Okay, so we have some little fins down here, which I just want to note seem a little small because you can see where the paint is kind of stuck across to each other, kind of made a bridge there at the ends. And there's the bottom. Okay, so we pull this back and it pops up the top here and that swings towards us. Now inside, everything is here except for the RAM. Somebody took the RAM out, but I'm pretty sure I have a couple sticks of DDR2, so that's no big deal. If not, it can be donated from another machine for testing at the moment, but it is here. Okay, so we have our, what is this, a DVD, CD-ROM, oh, a DVD rewrite, okay, drive. Someone unplugged it, no idea why, but all the cables are there. Of course, we'll need some RAM. I'm sure our CPU is underneath that. It doesn't look like anybody's taken it off. We can see some capacitors here that are starting to bulge, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. 
but as far as I can tell at the moment, it's just those two. We do have SATA, that is nice, uh, at least for me trying to keep some of these modern. Here are some, oh, that looks like a floppy, and then what in the world is that? Is that USB 3.0? It looks like it, but it might not be. It just, it just reminds me of it. I don't know, I don't think that was a thing yet. Um, according to the manufacturer date on the top of this thing, uh, let me get this to focus better. So I read somewhere online that these machines were discontinued in like April of 2007. But if this manufacturing date, if I'm reading it correct, wouldn't that be July 28th of 2007? So I'm not sure there. I do know that this particular model was introduced in 2006. So let's lay it back down. And, uh... But, but with that is what I'm saying is uh, it probably isn't, probably is for something else, but it certainly looks like it. It might be a little too big, actually. Not sure what it's for. Okay, well, as you can see, we do have a hard drive here, and uh, the wires for it were originally unplugged, but I plugged them back in at the store. This here appears to be like a power uh, supply for a, a video card, so... I mean, I guess you could really put some video cards in this thing. We have another SATA here and a power for the other hard drive caddy. That's nice. Boy, is it dirty. <clears throat> okay, let's, um, we'll unplug these again just so we can take a quick look at what hard drive we have in here. It's a Samsung 500 gigabyte. Wow. That's a lot of size for 2007. Not bad, not bad. Being that it's still in here, I'm assuming that uh, somebody left their information on there. So obviously we need to just get some RAM and boot it up and see what, uh, what we can find. And of course here is our graphics card. No idea what it is. Uh, we do have this very nice holder here to hold the cards. Just swing it up. And uh, then it falls back down. Isn't that nice? But there's the card. Again, very dusty. So, I guess we'll find out what it is. I can't really be that sticker too good at the moment. But, that is pretty much the inside here. Okay, clip that back into place. But as you can see, it's all kind of backwards uh, to a typical... Uh, case setup. Very interesting design. The idea here, I believe, was that uh, heat, it was supposed to pass through a little bit different of a way. You can push it out this way and the heat of the cards, instead of having all the components facing down, they're facing up, so it dissipates up. Of course, heat rises. So interesting, and obviously they made it here for full-length cards because there's slots over here to accommodate that. So I, I have high hopes that this will work. We just need to get some RAM for it. So that's the next step. And vacuuming it up. So we'll see what one I do next. But the next clip that you see will have some RAM in there and we'll be trying it out. Got my bin of storage here. Some laptop RAM, don't need that. This looks too old. What do we have here? Oh yeah, that's too old. Here we have some RAM, I gotta unwrap it. Here's some more, looks too old. Here's some more, could be just right. So yeah, looks like I'm going to need to accumulate some more DDR2. These are the last two that I have, aside from a 512 megabyte stick, which is, no, we're not gonna put it in there. Anyway, we have a two gig one here and a one gig one here. At least they both are um, 6400 PC2, so that matches. So we'll put those two in there. They are a match obviously. This one's two gig, this one's a gig, but three gigs, that's good enough for Windows XP, which I'm assuming is on here, but you never know. Somebody could have upgraded it. Got it all hooked up. So you turn the power strip on. Oh, and it's doing something. Ooh, very big fan. This isn't doing anything. The fact that it has very big fan tells me something is not right. 
yeah and that's not saying it doesn't have a signal let's see well we have an orange button there's no lights up here Now I had something similar like this before with one I picked up at the thrift store. The CPU had to be reseated. Let's try it again. Hmm. Didn't like that. Oh. Oh, we got green this time. And we got a light up here. Green. I'm, t I'm looking over at the monitor over here. I don't see anything yet. Oh, we got some lights. We have three and four. So I'll have to look that up. Okay, so something with RAM, people keep commenting. So I just flipped the modules around. Let's see what we get. Okay, got a little bit of woo into nothing. Oh, okay, we're doing something again. Okay, we have uh, different lights here. It's settled on two and three this time with the hard drive icon. Oh, maybe we're doing something. Oh, hey, there we go. Uh, that's a lot to read real quick. Uh, to continue to run setup utility, sure. Let's hit F2. Okay, this keyboard's working. I guess we just had to move the modules around. Okay. Yep, 2007 is the BIOS version. Okay, we have an Intel Core 2 Duo. 2.66 gigahertz. That's not too bad. Probably put Windows 10 on this, just like everything else. Memory, yep, a 2 and a 1, because that's all we have at the moment. VGA, date and time, yeah, 2007, sure, whatever. Huh? I'm guessing uh, the clock battery must be bad. I, we can replace that, but for the moment, um, we will set the date and time. Okay, we have Dell, and uh, we got all this stuff again. Uh, let's just floppy disk. I don't. I don't care right now. Oh, it has Windows Seven. That wasn't good. It rebooted. Start normally. It keeps rebooting. I'll have to look into it. Since this one is getting all cleaned up, I decided to vacuum out the inside of this one. I don't know if I ever showed it, but it was incredibly dusty in here. Full of little dust bunnies and stuff, but they all weren't stuck to anything too bad, so they just vacuumed right up, and I think it cleaned up well. I didn't know that this little uh, shroud here could come up, so that was very nice. Being able to clean underneath it and everything worked out well. Obviously, it looks like it had a stick of RAM right there, but it's now missing and gone. So I have some DDR3 in the collection, but I picked up these two sticks from the REPC place. And uh, so $17 for an 8 gig kick, a little bit much for a Pentium like this, but it's what they had, and that's not bad either. So, we'll go ahead and put in here and see if we can get anything on the screen while we're at it. So even though the fan turns this direction and should be blowing air through the heatsink, it's definitely not because it's so caked up in between here. So, we're going to take the fan off to do that, and I discovered that indeed you can spin this uh, part of the machine up and... Uh, access everything underneath which makes sense it's a good idea that you can do that so i'm also going to clean the parts that i didn't know i could clean while we take off the fan and uh, clean underneath the heat sink goodness gracious it most certainly needs to be cleaned fan is a thousand times better and so is the heat sink you can actually see through it now so we'll try to put it back together Again, much better. I am not going to put on the two bottom screws. They're kind of hard to get to. And to be honest, this is pretty on there. So it's not really going to go anywhere. Okay, let's give it a try again. We'll turn on the power strip here. And uh, monitors got power. Let's push the button. 
fan spinning. It's not blowing this direction anymore, that's good. And I can feel a breeze out the back. Much better, yep, definitely breeze coming through now. Nothing on the display, oh, there we go. I was gonna say it's not really lit up, but I'm sure it needs some type of uh, battery to uh, remember time and stuff, although it didn't ask us to set it, so maybe it's still good. Either way, we at least have the CPU being cooled. Got the front back on, got an SSD installed. Look at how well it's installed. And uh, now we just need to put an operating system on it. Here we go. And there's Windows 10. Well, that wasn't too hard to get going on here. The upgrade process with the license key thing didn't work right. I'm not sure what I did wrong, but whatever. I'm not too worried about it. It's not going to be a used everyday computer. It's just for tinkering around and, and all that kind of stuff. So I'm really happy with it. Here we go. Um, let's see here. Let me do Control-Alt-Delete. So there's our GPU. Uh, <clears throat> you can see our graphics down here. Intel HD graphics that come with the the Pentium, the dual core Pentium. And the 8 gigs of RAM is <laughs> way plenty for this kind of system. So yeah, not bad for $10 and, well, $17 for the RAM, but uh, that can always be used in something else. Nice little project. It was fun getting it working again. Don't know what I'll do with it next, but... We still have this one to get working, and I ordered a SSD for it. Boy, the prices of those have come way down. I got like a 500 gig SSD for $19. Ridiculous. Uh, it's amazing how much the price of that stuff has come down. I also got some RAM for it uh, coming as well. These two sticks work. Sometimes it, it's happy with it, sometimes it's not, but I'm not too worried about it. We got both on the way. Once that shows up, we'll continue with this machine. But for the moment, we got the little HP done here, and it seems to be working just fine. And we get a nice little airflow out the back here, which it didn't do before because it was so dusty. I'm pretty happy with it. Unfortunately, it seems the only way to effectively clean anything with the heat sink or the fan in the system, you have to take the thing apart. So let's uh, go ahead and give it a try. Hopefully, by the looks of it, it should just swing upwards and uh, we'll be good to go there but i have a feeling we'll need to reapply heat sink compound yep because the whole freaking thing comes off but i mean what can you do i guess uh we'll just put some new heat sink compound on it but you know what at least now we can uh, clean the fan and all the other components we can't normally reach so there's the fan out and we already took a look at the heat sink but like I said, now we'll be able to clean underneath here much better. And I mean, it probably isn't that bad of an idea to get some nice new compound on the CPU. Just realized this front fan can also come off. So get that cleaned up. If I'm already this far in, might as well go all the way. And now it is literally just a case. Not a single piece of electronics inside. Miscellaneous clean parts. Now we just need to clean off the old and put on the new. Getting things back in place, and I noticed uh, the ribbon cable here likes to touch the metal part here, and it's starting to rub through um, some of the insulation on the ribbon cable, so I put this electrical tape over it to help prevent that from happening. All back together, new thermal compound and all. So let's go ahead, and uh, we got one stick of RAM in there, and we'll see what we can do here. Let's turn the power strip on. We had a little bit of fan action there for a second. Let's see what we get. Oh, I didn't even touch it. Um, we got a two and a three. Oh, now they're just doing different stuff again. We do have stuff on the screen over here though. 
Um, of course, everything's kind of a different spot, so I've probably forgotten all of it. Let's uh, F2 here. And let's see what the... Does it say? Oh, here. Yeah, 2007. Okay, so we need to put a, a new battery in there. Let me find one. So we got the 500 gig SSD here and a RAM upgrade from Amazon. I wasn't expecting to actually find a decent priced RAM upgrade. It probably, I mean, so it's eight gigs, uh, two, uh, two gig sticks, four two gig st sticks, I should say. Uh, I think it was like 18 or $19 or something. Whatever, we'll give it a try. They're half height sticks. They're not a full height like this. But I've seen those before, I have them in other computers, so whatever. I'm not entirely sure if they're new or used. They are in individual packets here. And if we take a look at the pins, I don't really see any scratch marks on them. And it is name brand on there, it's Hynix. Whether it's etched on or stuck on, I'm not sure. We'll take a closer look, of course. But uh, that's what we're going to put in this thing. Okay, so here's the uh, etch on the chips. Hard to tell if it's real or not. I don't really know what to compare it with. Does this one have Hynix on it? It does. I don't know, it looks pretty much the same to me. Now one's a 1 gig and one's a 2 And then, you know, like this one has definitely been used. You can tell, you know, there's little scratches on the pins because, you know, it's been inserted before. Now, I do notice on here, at first glance, I didn't see it. But there definitely is signs, at least over here, where it has been inserted before. Now, maybe they do that for testing. I don't know. But it definitely looks like it has been inserted into a socket before but it's very clean so i don't know if it's rebadged they put a new sticker on it retest it i don't know we'll see if it works but i uh, got four of these okay and um yeah we'll go from there okay well uh the flash decided to be used this time but uh the ram is in there so now we gotta do the ssd there's the SSD. Yep, just sitting there because that's fine. I mean, it weighs like nothing. And uh, we have the Windows 7 install disk. In fact, it's a Dell Restore disk installed. So let's turn on the power supply here. And uh, it still likes to turn on like as soon as you do that. So let's push the button and uh, hopefully this RAM works. Well, we, we do have something on the display, so that's positive. Uh, let's go to setup here. I did, did see the uh, hard drive it looked like, or the SSD. What exactly am I looking for? Here we go. Okay, yeah. Eight gigs. All of them show up. So that's good. Okay, now we'll escape and exit. can hear the disc spin up. Now I did, uh, when I had the two gigs stick in there for testing and, and this hard drive that doesn't like to boot, I just thought I'd, uh, you know, run the Windows 7 install disc up from Dell and just see what it would do. Well, it got through this process and, and uh, well, stuck and hung there for a while. I don't know if that's just because it had two gigs of RAM or what exactly it was doing. So I decided to let it do whatever repairs it thought it needed to do for this drive. I don't know exactly how that would work, but it did something according to itself. And, of course, it didn't work. So, whatever there. We got the new RAM installed, as we just took a look at. The SSD. And let's install Windows 7. Now, hopefully, being a Dell install disk, it should authenticate itself automatically without needing a key. So we'll see how that goes. Well, to boot up and get to this point is still way incredibly slow for some reason. So we'll see how this process goes and if it's any quicker once we do get it up and running in Windows.
Well, that's exciting. We're actually getting somewhere. It just rebooted as soon as I turned off the camera. So uh, let's see what we get here. It just is, uh, well, it's still installing. So I suppose we need to give it a minute. You know, well, we're back to this screen. So it's going to complete itself, I suppose. Here we go again. I turned off the floppy disk thing so we don't have to see that all the time. Because every time it boots up, it'll say it's not found and then you have to hit a key. Well, who wants to do that every time? <clears throat> so let's continue. Boy, I keep uh, starting this camera up here, but now it's moving right along. I'm not sure why it had such a hard time getting uh, started up with the disk originally. There's our desktop. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look here. Okay, Dell. Yep, it's a 2.66 gigahertz Core 2 Duo. The 8 gigs of RAM does show up correctly. And uh, still says that it might need to be activated. Let's put it online and see what we get, I suppose. Let's see what this, uh, this graphics card is here. Again, there's all of our information. Uh, display. 128 megabytes. That's about what I'd expect, actually. It would have been neat if it had more, but uh, hey, at least it has some type of dedicated graphics, I suppose. A G4 7300 LE, whatever an LE is. So I thought that the key that's built into the disk or whatever would work at just activating Windows here. For some reason, I thought that's how it worked, but I could be wrong. Uh, I have seen it work with Dell machines and Windows XP. Maybe it wasn't necessarily a built-in feature for Windows Vista or 7. I've never tried installing Vista on a machine this age. I do have uh, one of those Dell Restore Discs in this little bundle here that I've acquired over the years. But I'm not a big uh, fan of wanting to use Windows Vista at this point in time. So... Uh, I don't know if we'll try that out and find if it even does work, but I have a second one of these SSDs, and since the key isn't going to work here, why even bother? Because uh, it's not going to have it, and it's not like it's going to be used or anything, but I thought we'd give it a try again. Um, and we'll just install Windows 10 directly and go from there. Windows 10, here we come with a very early edition. I'm also installing it, just wiping the one that we installed Windows 7 on. I can always reinstall it, uh, so we'll keep this one sealed for another day. After taking, like, forever to find an appropriate driver for this graphics card, we're finally up and going. Now, I mean the generic Microsoft Basic Windows driver thing. Of course, that works, but uh, obviously it doesn't look as good as when you have an appropriate driver installed. So after finding an appropriate driver that installed on the machine it didn't crash as soon as the thing booted up uh well here we are that geforce 7300 le never heard of such a thing before but we saw it when we had windows 7 going um it's working fine now just had to get a driver that actually seemed to install okay of course now we're doing the windows 10 update assistant getting it to the newest version and uh we'll go from there as uh, as usual I don't think I've shown, but a couple weeks ago, I found an iPod, of all things, at Value Village. $10, no idea if it works. Um, it is a 4 gig model, though. So, I mean, that's something. I believe that's the highest capacity the second generation Nanos came in. There was, I don't know if 1 gig was still around, but there was 2 and 4, I do believe. Maybe there was 8, I'm not sure. But I have a 4 gig silver one. And I use that a lot in college, just walking back and forth, because it was so small and light, to be honest. Of course, you could use your, you know, iPhone 8 or whatever it was at the time, but hey, this is retro and cool, at least to me. So we'll see if it works, but um, it does need some cleaning, so gotta do that. So I tried to use the update service for Windows 10 to get it to the latest version, and when I came back to look at it, it said it was undoing its changes for whatever reason. So let's go ahead and try it again today and see if we get anything different. Again, with the bit of turn on for whatever reason. Oh, good, good. 
That code, I believe, is something to do with RAM, which seems to be a common problem here. We'll let it spin on down and let's try it again. I have no idea why it's so picky. But we should boot up into Windows 10 here. And of course it does it relatively quick. Uh, so let me use uh, both hands. Let's try running this again. You know, I'm sure it probably lost everything I just downloaded. Yeah, now it's download again. I wonder how big this file is, because, like, I wonder if you can just download it once and then distribute it. I'm sure there's a way, but uh, we'll give this a try again. Once I became intelligent enough to actually plug in the Wi-Fi antenna, it does look like it does, uh, well, appear to find the original download from yesterday. So at least it doesn't have to download it all over again. And now it's verifying, and now it's installing. Again, we will see what happens. Well, we got to this very squished screen, because I'm sure, you know, it's probably assuming that you're not using a 4x3 aspect ratio monitor anymore. Uh, I'm not sure if it got this far before, but we'll see if it gets anywhere past 0%. Sometime later, and we have a desktop, or at least something to sign into. Okay, well, we have the hi. We're getting stuff ready for you. Okay, how long will that take? I really don't think Windows 10 likes to play well with this particular graphics card. What in the world is going on here? This should be a dark color or black or something, and okay, that's glitching out. Uh, this was fine before I did the update. I'm not sure. I tried reinstalling the, the drivers and everything, but uh, I don't know. Now it says activated, whatever. I'm not sure what in the world happened, uh, but it's just uh, not having a happy time really doing anything and going to, yeah, whatever that is. It has to be this graphics card. It just does not like it. I mean, it's not the most powerful thing in the world at all, but I mean, I have, I think, a Core 2 Duo machine that is of equal age and it doesn't have a graphics card and Windows 10 works perfectly fine on that. Um, I don't know, maybe it's because it's just using its onboard video. So I guess we'll think about what we want to do with this. Maybe I'll put Windows 7 on it. I don't really have a Windows 7 desktop computer. So, I mean, that'd be a good candidate. I don't even think I have a Windows 7 laptop here. I did for a while, but I think that one's running Windows XP now. So, I don't know. I'll think about this and uh, I guess we'll go from there. Well, I thought not very long and not very hard. In fact, I just went to do some dishes and I came back and uh, yeah, I think we'll put Windows 7 on it. That's what it came with when I found it. Even though it's a Windows XP machine when it was brand new, Windows 7 works absolutely fine on the machine and it's kind of age appropriate being 2007. I mean, that was like two years away. So it's within that... Uh, that date range and since I don't necessarily have a Windows 7 computer on hand not that I specifically need one it would be nice to have one because why not I mean I have a Vista machine back home it's the only Vista machine I have but uh, you never know you might want to turn it on and experience Windows Vista so you might want to turn it on and experience Windows 7 we're just having all kinds of fun now aren't we now we're stuck on the BIOS boot up screen because, yeah, haven't seen that one before. Do we have any codes here? A one and a four, whatever that means. We'll give it a second. Yep, we're impatient. Let's go ahead. Oh, okay. And uh, you want the uh, boot menu because we want to boot from the install disk. Here we go again. 